Today, I'm going to talk about how we're going to map some of the bank app or bank use cases to the cloud. So first of all, let's look at how a bank application uh, is built on the cloud or a typical bank application architecture or setup. So over here, you have a user, right? So that is interfacing with uh, the API uh, that is built on the cloud and the communication is secured via the TLS. And when the user is sending a request, right? So the first node is going to hit is uh, the load balancer or the API endpoint, right? So then the load balancer uh, will then route the request to, for example, reverse proxy. Then you know that hey, which service I should respond with, and then um, probably uh, you will route the request to uh, one of the many API gateways. And also, uh, in the meanwhile, uh, the traffic is going to be scanned by the AWS WAF, which is a web application firewall, or uh, other like security services over here. And in the meanwhile, right? Um, so you can also alternatively uh, have your secret or the key, right, uh, secure inside a cloud HSM, right? So the reason we need that is, I mean, you might think that, for example, you're building a VPN tunnel. Where everything is secure because the VPN tunnel is secure. However, I mean, the, the, the VPN tunnel is secure by the key or by a set of the key. The storage of the key uh, is really highly concerned, right? So that's why we need to like, store it in a dedicated devices, for example, the HSM. And AWS provides you with the cloud based HSM just to store the key, right, for uh, securing other services. So that's the reason. Uh, we put the, the cloud HSM over here. Uh, not uh, other than the cloud HSM, right? However, you can also have, like, for example, AWS, like the key manager, or secret manager, etc. And uh, of course, I mean, when the user comes in, you want to identify the user, right? So you can like leverage in the AWS Cognito that is integrated with all those uh, IDP providers, right? So over here, you know who the user is and whether the user is allowed to access particular application by, for example, uh, AWS IAM, right, which is the, the identity management services. And uh, after the request is hitting uh, the API gateway, and then uh, let's uh, have a look at the backend architecture over here. right? So usually, you're going to build application in VPCs. And if you want redundancy, you can build multiple VPCs uh, or you can have like different availability zones. Um, and usually, I mean, your, your key services will be across uh, uh, multiple availability zones, right? And um, also, I mean, you have different uh, choices of the application platform. It could be a microservices, for example, uh, the Kubernetes. So AWS uh, is uh, offering some of the cloud-managed uh, Kubernetes services. Or you can use a serverless, right, for certain functions. Or you can leverage on AWS Lambda, and uh, of course, uh, you you can keep all the uh, all the logs as a record. Or you can leverage on um, the message triggering, right, for a serverless function, right. So from your perspective, it's really like cost effective, and uh, also you can like build a sort of a conventional. Uh, cloud uh, virtual instances leveraging you know, AWS EC2 instances, right? And uh, so basically, uh, this uh, concludes a typical bank application architecture. Uh, so let's uh, look at some specific use cases for the FSI, for the banking uses, because we understand that the privacy of the user data or the confidentiality of uh, the user profile is the key, right? Is uh, concerned, is highly concerned. Right, so that's why we need to build a sort of a function or the flows of the function uh, that we usually uh, do on-prem, which is part of the Big Data Analytics platform processing to, uh, flow. Uh, however, on cloud, right, if we were to use the cloud-based the data analytics tool, uh, definitely what we are looking at is the cost, right, the operational uh, uh, simplicity, uh, and also uh, the performance. Right, so over here, I mean, you have the user data and you're going to send it to the cloud for ingestion. Right, so over here, I mean, you have the Glue ETL job interfacing the different DBs, right? For example, the JDBC or ODBC. And then you're going to like uh, process the data into different layers, right? So you might be familiar with the layers of data processing, 
for example, on-prem, you're using the Hadoop, uh, Hive, or uh, that is uh, processing the data on the HDFS, right? It might be processed into different layers, ODS, ADS, and etc. That is for a different uh, use cases, and uh, you might like simplify or complicate uh, into a different layers for uh, different uh, the uh, users' consumption. So over here, for example, the objective is to mask the user data, right? for example, their ID number. Uh, I want to only like, show the last four digits of each of the ID, user ID or the user IC number. So if that is the case, uh, then this is a flow that is defined uh, to uh, do the job. So it will be processed into different layers until the last layer is, for example, the processed data. Right? And then we're going to store the metadata right, of uh, the process the data into a separate uh, instance which is called the glue data catalog. Why we need to do that, right, is because that over here, I mean, since it's called big data analytics, there's a lot of tons of data, right, so it's not so effective that we query uh, the data uh, directly. Instead, we're going to extract the metadata of the data set that is stored, for example, in S3 or Redshift, and uh, make it into a list, for example, right, so over here it's called the glue data catalog that will be interacting with the Amazon Athena, right? Amazon Athena is built uh, or developed on uh, the Presto, right? So it's a high performance data query tool uh, if you're familiar with the on-prem big data analytics solution, right? And also over here, we're going to use the Amazon uh, QuickSight uh, to visualize it for the business user uh, to uh, have a better understanding. So basically, this is a typical use case is when we're concerning the user data privacy. Usually, we need to mask the data, and we can just simply insert this particular step right into a traditional the big data analytics data processing. And the next one is regarding the user interaction uh, and also the feedback collections and etc. So for example. I mean, you are a bank, right? You're really concerned about the feedbacks of your service. And sometimes the user don't really have a channel, right? So for example, like uh, 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 send some like uh, feedbacks to the forum, etc. Instead, use uh, social media platform like Twitter, right? So for example, um, you, are, you are a bank, you, you have a Twitter account. The user may uh, send some comments on, uh, the, uh, on your own like Twitter page. Right, and on, on the back end, you're going to collect the data in real time. So that's why you're using the Amazon Kinesis data stream. And then you're going to process the data right, via a serverless function. Right over here, this particular server function is first of all to identify the user, to know uh, uh, whether this user is recognizable, right? whether it's our uh, own, like for example, the premium users. Uh, so their uh, feedbacks will be highly valued. And also, you want to know okay whether the user is happy or unhappy. Right? You're going to use uh, the cloud native, the Amazon uh, Comprehend uh, to uh, that is the uh, view based on the AI and the machine learning to understand that. And of course, uh, if it's unhappy, I definitely want uh, the agent uh, to uh, send, uh, for example, the message to the client or trigger a call uh, to the client to ask about the reason. So over here, the AWS provide uh, with a cloud native. Uh, we call it CIM, the Client Relationship uh, Management Tool, which is called the AWS Pinpoint. Right? That is able to interact with, for example, the SMS gateway to send SMS to the user, or it can be integrated with the, the, the cloud-based call center right, to send uh, or to uh, initiate a call with the client. And of course, all the user data will be uh, stored for archival purpose. Right? So if that's the case, that we use a tool that is called the Kinesis Data File Host uh, that is uh, to perform some of the ETL jobs, so everything could be stored onto uh, S3 uh, bucket right, for long-term uh, archival purpose. And of course, you want to, like, for example, perform some of the search, right? you're definitely going to use the Elasticsearch services, uh, and it can be integrated with uh, this particular Kinesis Data File, uh, file Host as well. So that concludes the entire flow for a bank uh, to uh, park their user interaction uh, modules on the cloud, right? leverage the cloud native uh, functions and the services like Amazon Comprehend, right? like uh, the Amazon Painpoint. Right? So uh, it's really uh, useful and cost effective, I would say. Uh, so that uh, concludes my uh, explanation. Uh, thank you very much.